right, you all can hear me, I take it? Okay. Good morning. It is so good to be here in Amsterdam. It is so good to be face to face. It is so good to see people not in a little box. Are you out there? <laughs> Virtual is a thing, but I, I am a face to face person, so I, I am really pleased to be here. So, uh, my name is Eric Johnson. My role, uh, I am a, a principal developer advocate for serverless at AWS. If you find me any time today and want to talk serverless, uh, man, I'll talk your ear off. We'll go to town. We'll chat it up. Our, our booth is out there. We've got, uh, we, we're, we're doing coffee. We're going to show you how to build, uh, you know, how to do uh, touchless or contactless or whatever the buzzword is today uh, on ordering, how to order coffee using serverless. And I'm here for all that, but for this next 30 to 45 minutes, I do not work for AWS. I do not work for Amazon. Amazon is unaware of what is going on right now. <laughs> That's actually not true. But the opinions that I'm about to, to espouse to give you my thoughts on some things are my opinions. There's th there, there are things that I have been thinking about really, really kind of since we went into pandemic. Uh, and watching how we treat each other, how we as technical people, and you could, this, would, this would easily expand to just people, to the human race, but how we as technical people treat each other, how we accept, reject, whatever. And so we're going to talk today on, on what I'm calling rediscovering humanity in tech. Now, there's a couple of rules when I'm talking. Has anybody ever heard me speak before? Okay, a couple of you, great. Do you remember the rules? Put you on the spot? No, you don't have to. So here's the rules. And so those of you who are out there are like, rules, who are you? I'm the guy with the loudest mic at the moment. So these are the rules, all right? They're, they're guidelines. They're going to help you. The first rule is, this is any number I want it to be, okay? It's okay to laugh. People are going, Oh, does he know he has one finger? Yes, I do. I did not wake up this way this morning. No, that didn't make sense. I did wake up this way this morning, but not for the first time, okay? If I woke up for the first time this morning, I'd probably be one of your coffee shops coping, okay? Uh, second rule, which rule? Second rule is these are thumbs, and I know that. I do this a lot. The third rule is these are quotes, not apostrophes. <laughs> Unless, of course, they're apostrophes. It's all contextual. You got to figure it out. Okay? Sometimes I'll do this, which just looks silly. Every time I do this, someone in the back's like, is that a bunny? <laughs> it's not a bunny. Unless it is. It's all contextual. I do, like I said, I was born this way, uh, and, and I talk about it a lot. Uh, I am absolutely comfortable. I'll make a, you know, I'm comfortable being this way. I'll make a lot of one-finger jokes. If that makes you uncomfortable, I'm okay with that too. <laughs> Either way, I'm good this morning. So, uh, so we'll have a good time. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my family. I'm going to grab a drink of water here. There it is. I want to thank you. Um, she came and, oh, I don't think that's mine. Hang on just a minute. Oh, she pulled oh, out right on. I have a glass. Hang on, smoke. So I had to get my bottle of water open this morning. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories. I'm a drummer, okay? That's what I did. I really thought I was going to be a professional drummer. Um, and, uh, and we'll touch on that in a little bit. And I know right now you're going, are you really a drummer, really? I am really a drummer. I went to school for drumming. And um, I still play quite a bit, and I play in my church. And uh, when I was playing, I was actually went into this large church. By the way, this has nothing to do with my topic this morning. I'm wasting two minutes of your time. Um, I'll tell you why my bottle was open. So, uh, one of the things I do is when I open a water bottle, I have to put it between my legs to hold it, and I kind of open it like that, right? And of course, all water bottles in America are plastic. You know how we're not, there it is. So it never fails. The first time I've ever played in this church is 2,000 people in this church. And right before I went on, I opened a bottle of, waddle, bottle of water and that water shot all over me. So I had to walk out with a wet, yeah, so that's why I had somebody open my water for me. So, all right, so let's come back to the story here. So 
I am a dad of five kids, okay? That five kids, that is, not a, that is not a typo. I have five kids, our house is crazy, it's fun, it's, it's loud. Um, the kids' names are one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we find that easiest because dad can't remember names. They have real names and I've got them written down if you really need to know them. But my older three boys and I were out on a trip. And we're out driving, and, we're, and, and their ages at the time, I th they think they were like eight. No, they were probably like uh, 10, eight, and five, or four right around there. It feels like I'm making this up, doesn't it? He's making this up. I just don't have good memory. So anyway, we're driving along, and, and this, at this time, has anybody ever seen the movie Real Steel? Okay, good. All right, so like three of you are like, no, 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 I haven't seen it either, No. So there's this movie that came out about Real Steel. The premise of the movie is we have these robots that are doing boxing and fighting and no longer do humans fight. They have robots fight and they, people pay to come see it and it's WW whatever and, and there you go. And we had just seen this movie. We were pretty excited about it. So we're having the conversation driving home. And as we're going home, my oldest son, who's kind of my, you know, my, he's, he's combat, you know, and stuff. And he says, you know what? We should build a robot. So they all get excited. Yeah, yeah, let's build a robot. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, dad knows how to build a robot, sure. So I was a drummer. I mean, what couldn't I do, right? So, so we've decided to build this robot. And I mean, it was like, well, we're going to use a microwave for a head. And, you know, we have all these things. So my oldest son says, you know what? I'm going to teach the robot karate. It's like, oh, okay. Because we're going we're gonna to send him out to fight. And he's going to know karate. He's going to be awesome. And so my second son, he gets all into it. He's like, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to teach him how to box. Like, oh, that's great. Now, mind you, my oldest son does not know karate. <laughs> and my second son does not know boxing. But my third son, he's kind of quiet for a minute. Of course, I'm driving. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to teach a robot how to smell. I'm a great smeller. And we were all just kind of quiet. And then I'm laughing and I'm trying not to drive off the road. I thought, oh, it's hysterical. But then the other two are like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You can't teach a robot to smell. It's not going to be like karate or boxing. Man, just be quiet, number three. His name is Owen. And they got kind of rude. They were kind of through. And I remember watching him just get crestfallen, heartbroken. You see, they had taken away his value. They had contributed something. Both of them had something they wanted to put in. I'm going to teach them karate. I'm going to teach them boxing. I'm going to teach them to smell. Which truthfully, of the three of them, he knew how to smell better than they knew how to karate or fight. It made the most sense. But they had taken the value away. And he just stopped talking. And this is some of the things we're seeing in the technical world, in the world today, but in the technical world. We're removing value from people. Maybe we're not actually, but in our heads, or we're thinking they have less value. And so the first point I would make to you is this. Everybody wants to be valued. There's a, I, I used to work for a company, it was a partner company called Rackspace. And uh, you see my bag, I even still carry the, the Rackspace bag. And there was an investor, uh, and he also was, a, at one point, he was a, a, a VP, and, and he's had all kinds of roles in this company, but he's most well known for saying this. He said, what we all want from work is to be a valued member of a winning team on an inspiring mission. We want to be a valued member on a winning team on an inspired mission. And I think our companies right now, a lot of our companies, have, we have inspiring teams, don't we? We're doing, I mean, there's, I, I work for a company that does some really cool stuff. And I think that we have, you know, there's these inspiring teams and we're on a winning mission and things are going on. But I think where we're failing is making people feel B, or promote valued members. So I'm going to talk through a few things that I think uh, kind of affect how we think. Uh, and you'll pardon me, I'm 
just really dry. I'm missing my water here. So one of the first things I think is the problem is how we estimate value. How do we decide our own value and the value of others? About two years ago, just before the pandemic, I went in, I, I had a, a trip that I was doing, I was going to Turkey, I was going into Istanbul for a week. And um, I flew into Istanbul, and it's a brand new, I don't know if anybody's been there, it's a brand new airport called Ist for Istanbul. And, and it's huge, it's this huge airport. Someone told me, I think it was, it's the biggest airport on the planet right now, I, I could be wrong. I have no, that's anecdotal, I have no data behind that. I get in there and they've got all these lines of custom, right? And, and so I get, in, I get in line for customs. I'm standing there. There's about 20 people in front of me, taking my time. And I get up to the gate, and I hand the lady my passport. And I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, first time to Istanbul, I was pretty excited. Woo, I'm in Istanbul. Yeah, I'm all excited. She was less excited, you know. She scans my passport, and this is what she did. She scans it, and she goes, that's a red flag. I'll tell you right now, okay, usually you expect them to go, there you go, not so I'm, I said, oh, okay. So she, she gets on the phone. She's not talking to me at all. She gets on the phone, and she's speaking Turkish, Turkey, Istanbulish, I don't know. And it's a language I don't understand. I'm not even great with English, so there you go. And um, she's talking, blah, 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 and I finally, and I lean over, and I said, is there a problem? And she says, back behind the camera. So I stand there. And at this time, I'm getting a little nervous. So my host is texting me. Where are you? Why are you not out? I said, I've been, I've I'm at customs, I'm still trying to get through. Okay, so it's 20 minutes, she's not telling me anything, I'm standing there behind the camera, I'm not even blinking, I don't think. Then two armed guards walk out, and I'm not talking a simple pistol at the side, I'm talking full body armor, rifle, they walk out and they post up on either side of me. Is there a problem? At this point, I literally say to her, can I get back on the plane? I just, I'll just go. I'll see myself out. They close the line behind me. They tell everybody to go somewhere else. And they said, Mr. Johnson, will you, will you come with us? And I said, do I have a choice? <laughs> Mr. Johnson, you do not have a choice. Then I'll come with you. At this point, I've still got my phone. This is the funnest part. My mom calls me. So I answer my phone, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm gonna say bye to my mom, I guess. You know? So I, I answer the phone and my mom says, hey, are you, did you make it, are you in Istanbul? I said, yeah, I've been detained by customs, I have to go. And you hear, what? <laughs> Goes in the pocket. At this point, my value has shifted. When I walked up to the gate, I was, I was a normal human being to her, to everybody around me. But the looks I was getting my value had shifted. I was now a criminal of sorts. Too many two-finger discounts, maybe, I don't know. You'll get that later. But I could see them looking at me, and there's judgment going on. What did he do? I don't know. So they walk me, and I go back, and, and I go back into a back room, and, and it's, a, it's a conference room, also known as an interrogation room. And they sit me down, and nobody will tell me what's going on. And I ask them, what's going on? Please be seated. Okay, I'll be seated. What's going on? Please sit there. Okay. So I'm sitting there. So we're talking, and, and we're really, they're talking on the phone. And I've been left with one guard. The two are outside standing there. At this point, they've asked me, do you have any identification with your parents' names on it? No, that's not a U.S. thing. So they've collected all my information. They have my passport, they have my driver's license, they have my global entry card, and they have my Facebook up on their screen. And they have my mom's Facebook. And they're trying to figure things out. And finally I said, I've probably been there about an hour, and I said, please tell me what's wrong. I said, sir, we don't know if it's you, but we're checking, but there is a gentleman by the name of Eric Daniel Johnson who they didn't tell me what they did wrong. They didn't tell me if they weren't allowed to come in or weren't allowed to leave, but they were not allowed to cross the border. But it, I mean, 
you could tell in their eyes, I was him. I was guilty. I was being judged. He had made the assessment. So I asked him, I said, let me ask you a question. I said, do you have prints on this guy? Yeah, you're seeing it. And he said, I don't, I don't think he had caught my hand, but he said, but of course we have prints on him. I mean, it was like, why would you even ask that? I said, if you've got more than two, I'm not your guy. <laughs> and he said, <laughs> Mr. Johnson, you can go. <laughs> my value came back up. Our value is often assessed by external things. How good are we? How rich are we? How whatever? And that's not necessarily unfair. I think it's, if you look at someone, you know, nobody's going to pay me to play professional soccer. Football, sorry. Same thing. <laughs> Nobody, yeah, it just got from, from the front. No, it isn't. So, but our value is assessed, you know, people look at our value on how are, you know, on, on external things and how are we looked at. And we also tend to assess and uh, we, we value ourselves. And it's kind of funny. I have to be honest this morning. This wasn't going to be part of the talk, but it was really interesting that it happened this morning. I start the day like every other healthy person. I start the day with the Diet Dr. Pepper. Okay, that's the doctor says you should if you don't. Okay, they don't have Diet Dr. Pepper here in wherever we are in Netherlands or anywhere outside of Colorado, uh, United States. And so I, I start the day with a Coke because it's a poor substitute, but it's there. So I went over to the counter and I said, Can, can I have a Coke? Like, yeah, so they went to get it out, but they didn't have a can opener. I was like, okay. So a little bit later, they came over to me and they said, We're not allowed to give the Cokes out. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not proud of this. I'm not going to lie to you. But in my head, I, I was thinking, don't you know who I am? I'm the keynote speaker. I should get a Coke. I didn't say that. And I'm embarrassed that I thought that. But it was very humbling to think about the fact that in my own head, because I have a loud voice and the ability and, and one finger and can make jokes about it, that I should get a Coke before everybody else. Sometimes we value ourselves more than others. And this is important as we're looking at, at finding humanity in tech, it starts with understanding that we are all equal. Yes, you may have a skill set that I don't. And yes, we should evaluate that. There are things that we do in life, but when we look at just the fact that we're living, breathing human beings, there's equality. And if we don't get that in our heads, we don't treat people that way. I remember, I told you I was gonna come back to this, I'm a drummer, believe it or not, yes, I went to school. I went to community college to play drums and I was the best drummer there. Now I really thought that was something, okay? Now it, it, I wear wristbands on my hands and I, and, I, and I really do play. It's always fun though, because sometimes I've been hired out to play and sometimes I don't. I, I come up and I, I just pick up one stick and I play this way. And, and I go, all right, let's rock and roll. And it's usually in churches because the, and they can't do anything about it. Oh, he's good. And then I put on the wristbands and we move on, right? But so I was going to this community college. I, I really thought I was the best there was. I, I had that in my head. And I allowed it to affect how I treated people. And you may be thinking, well, that was dumb. But it's true. We do that, don't we? We get in our head, our value is here where your value is here. And I can remember hovering over a drummer, get up, I got it. Yeah, I got it, I'll go, I'll sit in. And we do that. We do that in our coding. We do that in, in how, we af how we affect life. We value ourselves, we overvalue ourselves, and we, we think just because I'm a better drummer makes me a better person. That's not the case. So I went on, I actually went to a school of music, and here's what I found out. Turns out I am a phenomenal drummer for one finger. Past that, I'm super average. 
and nobody's gonna pay me to do it. That was a shock to my system. The worst drummer there ate my lunch. But I will tell you this, that's where I learned the most. One of the things I've always said is if you're the smartest person in a room, change rooms. When you're the dumbest person in the room, you learn the most. And, and it brings humility in, right? So when we're looking at, at balancing and finding equality between us, sometimes it's good to not be the smartest person in the room. The other side of this, when we look at value, so, so when we think we have it all, a lot of times we treat people differently. Took everything in me not to go, I get a Coke. Where everybody else is, but I get a Coke. I'm special, but I'm not. The other side of that is, is sometimes we undervalue ourselves. When I was in high school, I remember I was, we were at a, I was in a, in a band and, and um, I was in a marching band. <laughs> I was all that. I was the full package right there. Marching band and drama. So, um, and, and we, our band would go to SeaWorld in, in um, California for the day. And at night they had this dance. It was all, it was a band competition. They had this dance and we're all, all together. And there was a girl there who I just know loved me because I loved her. I mean, we hadn't really talked yet, but it was there. I remember I looked at her and she went, she loved me. So I finally, after hours of almost walking up and walking back, I finally walked up and I said, would you like to dance? I don't think she thought I heard her, but here's what she said. She said, I'm not dancing with a freak. That destroyed me. As a young man, 16, 17 years old, that almost ended it for me right there. It shouldn't, I shouldn't have allowed it, but that rocked my world. I'm not a freak. You're not a freak. It's not a word I even like to use. But when she threw that out there, that was devastating. And it was hard to come back from. I didn't realize it until later. I didn't ask anybody to dance. I didn't do anything. I mean, it probably affected me for years. You see, sometimes we let that external Thing and we don't realize the words we say. So, so there's two points to this. We let that external thing hit us and we say, that, that obviously, if they've said it, that's what I am. And the other thing is we don't understand the power of words. The power of words are, are brutal. They have the ability to pick us up and make us sing and dance and, and, and everything, but they have the ability to just drop us like a rock. And we cast them casually without thinking. She could have simply said, no, thank you. But she went beyond. She had to express an opinion that didn't do anybody any good, didn't do her any good. She was no longer pretty after she said that. And I want you to think about that when we cast words out, are they necessary? I in no way say you have to always compromise. You, or this is not my opinion, and we'll jump into it a little bit more, but I'm not an advocate for always suckering under whatever you say, and, and, and I agree with everything, but I am an advocate for picking your words, for picking them wisely and using them effectively to remember that these are people. That was a dis devastating time for me. Um, and it was tough to recover from. One of the things that, that when, as, you, as you speak, and, and I learned this growing up, you know, one of my, one of my favorite things, and, and there's a quote by a, a, my favorite author, C.S. Lewis. He said, humility is not speaking less about yourself. It's speaking about yourself less. You see, when she approached that, she needed to let her friends know that she was cool. 
She needed to make a statement about herself. I'm not dancing with a freak. When a simple no would have worked. I encourage you to think about that as, as we converse uh, and as we, as we think about you know, how we interact with people, I encourage you to think, what are the words that get my message across but don't, don't attack? Because here's the truth, and this is my next point. I think we're losing the art of civil debate. And, and I think... It's kind of funny, and, and, and I don't want you going out of here and going, Eric is against all social media, but I think social media is one of the problems. I think it's one of the reasons. I don't think social media is evil. I don't. I think it's a tool. But what it is, is it's, it's taking away our ability for three-dimensional conversations. We're going to try an exercise here. I'm going to have you, if, if, if you work with me for it, can I get everybody to stand up? Cameraman's like, are you kidding? I'm still here. All right, everybody face in the middle. Face, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, the middle is, yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody face in the middle, okay? On the count of three, I'm gonna do a countdown, so it's gonna be one, one, one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was great at Marco Polo. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do a countdown. Three, two, one, go. I want you to yell your favorite pizza topping. Okay, gotta do it, all right, everybody? Here we go, three, two, one. I'm sorry, what? All right, okay. All right, raise your hand if you said pineapple. Okay, all of you out. Okay, you can have a seat. There, you're welcome. You've all been on Twitter. That's Twitter right there. Social media is a fun thing because it is 99.9% mouth and 0.01%, I'm not sure that math came out right, but you know what I'm saying, ears. The thing we use social media for is we get on, we espouse our opinions. Pineapple, pineapple, pineapple is wrong. Okay, if you know anything about me, you know that I do not put pineapple on pizza because it's a sin. So... But that's my opinion, and it's right. So, but we couldn't hear each other. Because a lot of times, and again, I, don't, I am not down on social media, folks. I don't want you to think that. But I am down on how we approach that. And I'm not going to pick a side. I'm not going pol politics. I'm not going religion. I'm not going anything like that. I certainly have my opinions, yes. And I'm glad, you know, you want to catch me somewhere else, I'll tell you. But what I find is... Nobody goes to social media to get an opinion. They go to social media to give an opinion. And then we tend to pile on. Oh, yeah, 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 that is bad, that is bad. And, and what happens is we get things out of context. We get third, fourth, fifth hand information. But we, we treat it as gospel. I remember one time, I'm a son of a teacher, by the way. My dad was a high school teacher. Uh, my mom, music minister, two jobs you don't do for money. <laughs> you know, we, we were a pretty poor family. Uh, and I remember my dad taught for 40-something years. And he was a good teacher. He was a fantastic teacher. I had him for class. Uh, he taught accelerated biology. And I had him for class, and I got kicked out for talking too much. No point to that, I'm just still bitter. So, but I remember, you know, my dad has since passed away, and I'm glad he never saw this. But I remember here about, about a year ago, there was a thing on TikTok, and it was a challenge to students to slug a teacher, to rip something out of a bathroom, to whatever. Now, I found out later, it went all over. It was in the news, I don't know, anybody, did anybody hear this? Okay, good, I'm the only one, all right, okay, good. It was in the news, it was everything, and then it was found out it was, it was a hoax. It wasn't real. But it had gone everywhere, and some students reacted to it because they didn't have the full story. But what they did have is the anonymity that's provided by social media. They did have the ability to 
do things without, with very little consequences. Excuse me, sorry. So here's the point of that. When we're doing social media, when we do that, it's not always the best venue to talk because it's a two-dimensional conversation. It is simply, I think this, you're not seeing my body language, you're not seeing my facial expressions, you're not seeing anything, so you have to take my text at face value. No, there's no sarcasm felt in it, things like that. And so it takes away this ability as humans to con converse. And I think the pandemic kind of hit us on that way as well. And this is actually prevalent. I had this conversation when we were originally talking about this, this talk is the pandemic also put us in kind of, we isolated from each other. And we found it's like uh, everything became face value. And so my encouragement to you is if you've got, I, I in no way, again, I am in no way saying agree with everybody, everybody's happy, everything. There are things that we need to stand up for and, and might be different for me than it is for you. And I'm not going to, you know, we're not going down that road. But there are things that we need to stand up for, but it's choose the right medium. If you go back and look at my Twitter, for the most part, you'll notice it never touches politics. It never touches religion. It never touches anything that is going to be controversial. And it's not because I don't have opinions. It's because it's not the right venue. If you have a point to make, if you have a discussion, get with the people if you can. Get face-to-face. -face. Get even, sometimes we do, you know, screen time. Get into the three-dimensional conversations where you see the context, where you see the, the, the you get those, those cues and you get the, the body language, things like that, because that's how we're designed to work. We're humans. We need humanity. Yeah, it's interesting in my, in my about, I did have some slides for this, but I decided I wasn't gonna use them, but in, that, in my about slide, it shows, uh, you know, I've been, a, I've been a developer for 20 billion years. I've been an architect for about 10 years. I've been a developer advocate for four years. I've been a dad for 21 years. I've been a grandpa for five months. That's the coolest. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, but, uh, and then I've, I've been a human for 52 years. And that's the one that, that really counts. Humanity, human, I interact with people. I interact with my grandson. I've given up parenting entirely. I'm just a grandparent. But I encourage you, step away from that. I'm not telling you to get off social media. But I am telling you, take the time, and I guess this is the deeper meaning, take the time to climb into the context. I'm gonna say something that's probably gonna be, be, it's gonna go both ways here, but I know, my, my wife calls it my, my lecture voice, because I'm a son of a teacher, right? She calls it my, you're sliding into your lecture voice. Some people would say mansplaining. Here's the deal, sometimes I'm not mansplaining. Sometimes I'm just trying to explain. But sometimes I am. And, and so I, I think what we need to understand is, and, and it goes back to that other, what are the words, what's the value, what's the cost of the words I'm using? How necessary are they? Because a lot of times we need to show how smart we are. Okay, you may, you may know that, but let me show you how smart I am. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. Instead of just going, good job. Let me help you get better. And again, it comes, I wanna go back to the humble thing. It comes around about who are you thinking of more, yourself or else, or other people. And I encourage you when you speak, there are those things, it's a pick your battles thing. This is important enough that I have to hurt your feelings to say it, and I'm gonna do it with as much love as I can, but this is important enough. Or you know what, there's no value to this argument. I'm not gonna do that. Where are, where are they at? Put others before yourself. I mean, that's, that's really honestly kind of, kind of where, that, where that's driving to. The next point I would tell you is trying to figure out the right way I want to say this. Kindness. 
does not always mean compromise. And I've said it a couple times already. Kindness does not always mean compromise. There's an old movie. Uh, I'm going to just say, anybody seen Roadhouse? It's really old. Okay, good. All right, we'll talk. Yeah. So there's this old movie, and, and, and this guy's a bouncer, basically. And his job, and he's telling his people how to h- handle things. And I love what he says. Someone gets in your face, be nice. If someone tries to go around you, be nice. Someone yells at you, be nice. Now he ends up with, until it's time to not be nice. But I'm gonna tell you, be kind. I would, kindness goes a long way and it doesn't cost a lot. When I was, at, I used to work as a, as a supervisor in a cable company and they actually, we had classes on how to argue. And we would sit and we would, I mean, we'd get these just horrible people just cussing and yelling at us. And what they taught us is be nice. Control the conversation, talk quietly. Yes, sir, I understand you're frustrated. Yes, that is quite a bit. That, logistically, that person has to stop screaming to hear what I'm saying, so that's one thing. The other thing is, I'm not gonna have a, court, a heart attack uh, in the middle of it because I'm so stressed out. I'm still gonna get my point across. I'm still gonna explain to them, you need to pay this late fee, or you need to do this but you do it in an approach to kindness. Because here's the deal, and here's my last point. We forget the humanity behind tech. I watch on, uh, just last night I was perusing through Twitter and I watched just the attacks going on sometimes. Oh, and it's never, oh, I don't think that's a a great way of approaching that, or, or, oh, this, this code doesn't look right. It's what a moron, what an idiot, what a whatever, fill in the blank. These people of this political party are blah, blah, blah. These people of this religion are blah, blah, blah. And it's an attack not on the product of these people, but on the people themselves. There's several people I know that make a living for tearing down companies. And we've had lunch, and they always say, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't attack the people, I just attack the product. I'm sorry, I don't buy it. Because here's the problem. Behind every product is a person. Behind everything we do are people. Humanity is not gone from tech. Humanity is very much part of and important to tech, but we've lost it in some ways. Not everybody. I don't want you going out there and go, man, I just failed. But what I'm saying is we can do better. We can encourage better. We can lift and help each other do better. And man, as you're going out today, I encourage you in the conversations you're having, man, speak your, if you come to me and say, what do you think about A, B, or C? I'll tell you. It may not be a popular opinion, but I'll tell you. But I will do it in a kind way. I will do it in a way that, I don't need to attack you. That doesn't help but I will have that talk with you. I encourage you to help me. You know, we we say, well, this this is a much bigger problem than the folks in the room. Yeah, but it has to start somewhere. It has to start somewhere where we say, you know what, I'm gonna change the conversation. I'm gonna change the, the approach. And I encourage you all with me to help change that a little bit. Tech is a powerful, powerful, powerful industry. Lots of money, lots of people, Lots of things going on. But the fun thing about tech is small pockets can make huge changes. And I encourage you with that. I hope you have a great day here at GoTo. Uh, If you disagree with what I'm saying, I'm okay to talk about that. Come talk to me and say, look, I don't think that was right. I would love to hear your feedback. Uh, If you wanna hear more from me, you can follow me on Twitter at edjgeek. Uh, I tweet about why pineapple shouldn't be on pizza. I tweet about why Diet Dr. Pepper is a great way to start the day. I tweet about serverless. I tweet about family. I overwhelm you with pictures of my grandchild. So those are all the warnings. Um, With that, I encourage you to have a great day. Thank you for your time. We'll see you later.